Oh. Wow, I'm getting old. It's not easy getting in and out of these cars. So yeah, the M4 is parked up. And obviously, you know, that is my M4. But have a look at this one. This is the German Auto Works M4 GT4. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I can flip a dog to a million. I don't like to brag, but I'm really on. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. Three, two, one. Hello, mate. How are we? All good, thank you. Um, right in front of us, we have an M4. Yes. And I know it's not the M4 that I mentioned at the start of the video, guys, but do you just briefly want to tell us about what you guys do and then we'll get to the car? Yeah, so welcome to German Auto Works. You are joining us today on our very first Cars and Coffee meet. Um, we actually had some early birds, including the man behind the camera, so I appreciate be. that. Got to be here. Um, we're basically trying to show everybody what we do and give everybody an idea of the amount of scope that we can work on these cars, you know, from general servicing to full race car builds and anything in between. Uh, behind us, we've got a car that was run by a company that everybody knows, which is Teguar. It was built for Teguar uh, by Motion Motorsports and it campaigned in 2018 in the Club Enduro Championship. It won the championship and it hasn't really done much since then. Sold to a private owner uh, something went wrong with the car and it sat for about three years. Mm -hmm. It's made its way finally to us and we are currently fixing it up. In terms of Club Enduro, just in case there are a few guys that watch the videos that don't really know about track driving, what is it? Because I believe you guys do Club Enduro as well? Yes, we campaigned. we've campaigned in Club Enduro for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Club Enduro is essentially a, the, the UK's leading club endurance championship. By endurance, we mean two hour races, we have a pit stop, a mandatory pit stop in between. We have refueling, driver changes. We've got a whole championship, so there's points. And essentially, we travel the UK all around the tracks. And also, we do a track uh, in Belgium called Spa, okay. which everybody loves. Oh, yes. Um, so, you know, we get to travel around and just compete against other businesses that are like our own, mm -hmm. you know, some privateer teams, and really put these club cars to the test. And, and in terms of the cars, I believe you've got the one that I started the video with outside, which is obviously an yeah. M4, which is why I like it so much, but you've also got an E36 as well. Yes, so the um, Club Enduro is formed of three classes, okay. class A, B, and C. Yep. It's all based on a power to weight ratio. I see. So we have uh, 290 for turbocharged cars in class A, mm -hmm. brake per tonne. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, naturally aspirated cars are 300, so they get a little bit more. I see. Uh, and then class B is 260 brake horsepower per tonne. Fair enough. And then class C is 180. So that E36 is actually a car that we won the championship in. Yes. Uh, Joel Oswick, our star wonder boy. I don't know where uh, he is. He's just yep, over we'll there. Him. There he is. There he is, wonder boy. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he win the championship, but also he won the John Miles Award, which you there see that go. big check up there. There so we go. He won a thousand pounds for being young driver of the year. Decent. And also a thousand pounds towards his race entry fee, which is great. But Class C is a fantastic entry level mm -hmm. class for you to do. Maybe if you were a track day guy, uh, you wanted to take it a step further. Sure. Class C is where you want to be. 100%. Well, yeah, that is the information on the inside. And I know what you guys are all waiting for. It's that M4. So can we <laughs> pop outside and yes. have a look at it? And we are back with the M4. Can I call it a GT4? GT4, yeah, I guess you oh, could mate, say that it because it would be eligible, I guess. Oh, really? Unless it, oh, it, they probably say it needs to be FIA, but you know, get that away. 100%. It's, it's got all the GT4 parts. It is on identical. It. I play a lot of Assetto Corsa and they've got the M4 GT4. So li looking at this is literally bringing your dreams into reality. But first thing off the bat, that is my stock M4 over there, stockish. And this doesn't look stock at all. Can you just run us through a few mods that? everyone would understand. Don't go too crazy. I know yeah. the jargon can get quite serious, <laughs> but starting off at the front anyway, what have we got that's different than okay. a casual M4? So when BMW designed the GT4 program, mm -hmm. uh, they designed an aero package. Mm -hmm. So we've got the uh, front splitter that was made for the GT4. Sure. It's almost uh, a splitter slash under tray with internal brake ducts oh, in it see. as well. So down here, yep. you've got an inlet for the brake ducts and then they actually feed into a tube that goes into the back of the back brakes. Of the, oh, this. So okay. that's very, very nice. Um, very strong, held on by cable mm -hmm. um, as well as bolts. And then we've got the dive planes here or some people call them canards. Yep. Again, that's, you know, from the GT4. Um, all of this aero tied in with the GT4 rear wing as well. So mm -hmm. 
you know, it's the full package. Definitely. In terms of front end, because I know on mine, I've got a cooler. Is the cooling system still the same? So I know yes. this car drives hard, so is the stock cooling system okay? Or would you say for Enduro? Yes. Um, fantastic design from okay. the factory. So uh, it does have a CSF radiator on it, main okay. radiator, but I don't really deem that as necessary. Mm -hmm. um, the original GT4 car didn't have any extra cooling packages well. on it or anything like that, apart from a diff cooler at sure. the back. Sure, sure. Um, so, imagine. you know, if they can do it, we can do it as well. Definitely. Are we able to pop the bonnet? Of course. Yep, so we've got a Flossman oh, he's flexing now. carbon bonnet he, here. I was which... going to go inside and pull the handle yeah. twice. So that just needs to just pop up like that. Yeah, so they're just wow. aero catches. And then we've got a carbon Kevlar wow. uh, bonnet from Flossman. Have a look at that. Uh, with the, the, the vent that's put in there. This is something I was very surprised to see. This yes. is the stock yes. top mount intercooler. Right, so... Little story. Yes. First race uh, mm -hmm. at Croft. Yep. We had the CSF one on there. Sure. I already had my doubts. Yep. Um, charge air temperatures went through the roof. Okay. Absolutely through the roof. Uh, they also, because the charge air cooler is very heavy, mm -hmm. you know, it's a big aluminium piece. Sure. When we were hitting curbs, the OEM sort of rubber mounting that's holding that down was coming loose and it wow. was popping off. Wow. So then we lost all boost. And I said, right, back to standard. You know, the GT4 original car run the standard one. There Let's you go. Let's put it on. We went testing and the figures were never better. This isn't tuned. You nope. ain't got 500 horsepower to get those times, so. No. Nope. So we started off as a car that had about 560 horsepower. Very, yep. very heavy car. Yep. And it's now running 420. So is that less than So it's stock? less. This is a competition from so, factory. Yeah. And it was actually quite hard to go down to the 420, imagine. which is just the normal M4. Of course, yes. Uh, our buddy at Tom Wrigley, or mm -hmm. sorry, our buddy Tom Wrigley at Tom Wrigley Performance sure. sorted us out. He got Mr. Mike Ball on the of job. Of course, Mike Ball 88, there he is. <laughs> you know, it's weird someone coming to you and saying, uh, can we have less power, oh, please? factory, please, <laughs> yeah. But the whole point about that is take weight out the car, Yeah. bring the power down, bring reliability up. 100%. And that was what we found. We were overheating the standard cooling system mm -hmm. with 560 horsepower, brought it all down, no problem. So am I right in assuming turbos are stock, no hybrid? Stock turbos, wow. um, it's had a crank hub capture plate okay. on it, not the fix, oh, just wow. the capture plate. Is that safe there, Jay? Well, in Enduro, my opinion, you know, so. <laughs> I might you know, split some opinions, but in my opinion, I don't know if the crank hub fix is, you know. All right, yeah, don't listen to it. Cool. Anyway, so we've done two seasons on this engine Fair and enough. Um, running at stock power. We haven't had any slippage or anything like that at the sure. hub. Um, fair, fair play. Just looking over here, because this yes. is something I am not used to seeing. I have a lot of suspension changes on my car, yep. but I've always gone either one way or two way, but I've never had external reservoirs. Yes, so this is a Moton kit. It's a two way suspension, mm -hmm. so we can do bump, rebound and compression. Wow. Um, it's mounted in this way so that when we're at tracks we can just make quick and I easy see. adjustments also Fair another play. thing you notice with motons and asts is you get real nice noticeable feedback clicks. oh yeah you know uh, there's that some is solid. other stuff that's out there that's a bit like was that a click yeah or was that i not? get you i get you that's solid Definitely. um another thing that you might mention or notice it's not that we've forgotten to plug it in i did see that what is that that's the valve tonic motor ah yes i commented on a reel you did you recently did. make sure you guys follow these guys on instagram as well but yeah that you said was giving you some running issues yeah so the valve tonic motor is prone to failure and mm -hmm. when you're doing endurance racing you know we spend a lot of money to get there sure we don't want to halfway through the race have an electrical issue sure the car runs absolutely fine without that plugged in yep. however the downside is it does use more fuel so it's less fuel efficient yeah but it can run without it and we run it without as a preventative sure. thing for our racing if we Fair were driving enough. this car on the road we wouldn't recommend that you disconnect it because okay. the throttle response is horrible <laughs> <laughs> but when you're you know driving on a racetrack Hard. you're just full throttle so. fair enough fair enough so these are the actual gt4 wheels wow. bought them from bmw um they're 11 inches wide an 18 inch wheel and then we got the pro 5000 rs in there so that's a touring car set up wow. in there um to get these 11Js to fit on the front mm -hmm. and to not destroy your wheel arch liners, we fitted 
lock stops and those okay. lock stops were fitted to the original gt4 car which a lot of people don't know yeah if you're like me and you're a bit of a nerd i surfed the parts catalog be done, mate. and found it's all these little done. gems so <laughs> what that does is it stops the wheel from hitting the wheel arch liners fair enough um, you don't need to turn that tight when you're on the racetrack sure uh, so that's how it fits we've also got the spl uh, bottom arms on there as well to mm -hmm. give it that bit of camber fair enough we can pull the front in the top in sorry as much as we can and these are the original arches that we're able to run under fair play and did you say this is what, what tire width is this this is 295, 295. on a Dereza. this i've already opened this to do some b-roll mate yeah what sort of dog guys have a look at that i that. can do that with one finger so that, that is a nothing. three kilogram carbon fiber door it's carbon fiber by flossman um the windows custom by uh, ACW Motorsports. Wow. So we actually sent them the door and then they made the window for us, sure. which is great. Um, yeah, so this door, with M4s, the absolute biggest saving you can make is putting these doors on. I can imagine, I've opened my doors to get in the car. Yes. So when I opened this, yeah. I literally nearly pulled it off the car. I was like, where is the weight? <laughs> so 30 kilos each doorway. Jesus is yeah. alive. So when we were running the car at 560, we had the original doors gutted, yeah. which was like 20 kilos, even gutted is sure. 20. But once we put these doors on, we could then bring that power down. Yeah. This, is, this is really what unlocked the performance of, of the course, car. Of course, I can imagine. Um, while we, before we go inside, this looks absolutely baller. <laughs> I just, I wish I could have it on mine, but it probably doesn't need it because I still have this. Yes. You have got something different in here that yes. I believe is feeding from, what is this? Okay, so in, in order to compete, we need to be able to fill the car quickly. Sure. Uh, we got a mandatory three minute stop, but we need to get a driver in and out. And also we need to get 75 litres of fuel in that car. All in that time. So what we have to do is use this system. It's a dump churn, uh, quick fill, dry brake system. Sure. Uh, we have a big bottle, which I'll show you in a bit, and we actually plonk that on there and 20 litres goes in 10 seconds. Jesus. It literally just goes glug, 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 gone. 20 litres. So it's just quick, fast, in, it's safe. It's all in what they call a safety cell. So sure. Inside that metal box in there, mm -hmm. there is a plastic fuel tank uh, and there's fuel pumps in there that pull the fuel out Fair enough. but it's necessary for racing and that's why we have it i get you i get you so now can we now enter of the course cockpit? Go for it. so guys the first thing i noticed when i got in there is there is no interior <laughs> there is literally nothing in terms of weight saving do you remember the numbers when you got rid of all of this interior well i can tell you what the weight is now which okay. is 14 20. And stock, these are not 16, 90. Am I wrong or 15, No, 90? I think these are like more like 1,700. Jesus. We have to run to a minimum weight because of our power level. Sure. And that's that sticker on the side there. So 1,466 is the weight that the car has to finish the race at. I see. Um, when we had the higher power, we were running what was called a ballast box, okay. which was, you know, a little bit of lead and sure. stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, inside we've tried to keep it looking OEM. So I've, you know, tried to keep the original dash there, making making effort to make it look nice. Yes. But we've got rid of anything that is unnecessary. So in terms of the dash, I know I can see kind of looks similar to mine from this angle, yeah. apart from the roll cage. Yeah. Does all of that still work? Yeah. Oh, wow. So you still got the AC in there. AC because we need the driver to stay cool. Yes. Um, but what we've done is we've taken the big, heavy heater box out. Sure. And we've just taken what's called the evaporator. Yes. And then we have uh, plumbed in like a ducted fan that comes from oh, the rear yes. window. I think I saw this on down. your Instagram as well. That's it. Yes. And then it comes through and we use the OEM heater panel to, to change the speed of the Yes, pump, I did see the, this. The, the fan. And then Joel gets lovely cold air Jesus. out here, Which is really needed for endurance racing. I can because imagine. If you get a hot head, oh, yeah. you're losing you're time. Gone. Yeah, so con the, the extra gone. weight we're carrying to keep the AC sure. is worth it because he's more switched on when he's 100%, driving. hundred percent, a hundred percent. We've got um, a drinks bottle in there. I was going to say this tube, so this yeah. runs to yeah, a little bottle on the other side, which we fill up in the pit stop with ice cold water. He wow. also likes us to pour water on the seat, which sounds weird. But wow, okay. You're so hot when you're in that car for an hour. Jesus, I can out. imagine wearing a suit as well. Exactly that, fire retardant. Um, so just water, under. just yeah, water just in water. there. No yeah. fruit shoot, nothing no, like no, that. No, no, no fruit shoot in or there. anything like that. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah, standard centre console. Uh, the iDrive still works as well, so that we can change the M modes if we want. Wicked. Um, but I can imagine on this, he's just driving traction fully off all the time. Oh yeah. So MDM not in the wet, or are you running a different tyre in Joel the wet? Joel just sends it full traction off all the Fair time. Fair play. All the time. Guys, don't try and be like Joel and write your car <laughs> off. If you do write it off, obviously come down to Joel and Works. They'll put a cage in there and sort it out. But yes. um, 
Jeez. So the cage, good, good talking point. Um, Gosling Racing. Yes. Um, the Sean. only person I'll use for, for cages. Sure. Uh, what you get with Sean is a safety device, and that is what they are. 100%. They're safety devices. 100%. Um, lovely TIG welding here around the gussets. You know, it's MIG welded for the, for the majority. It's mm -hmm. T45, which is a lot of people think, what's T45? Uh, it's a lighter material. Compared to CDS? Compared to CDS. Sure. Uh, it's stronger, which means okay. you can also run a thinner sidewall. Fair enough. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's a better material to use all round. It does cost more though. But safety, you can't really pinch when yes. it comes to safety, I've realised. Exactly realized. that, <laughs> exactly that. So, you know, you're there building a race car, how can you save weight? You know, you can buy carbon doors, or when you're building it, you can choose a T45 cage. You're gonna be saving 20 to 30 kilos. And that is a Just lot. in the cage. A lot of people um, underestimate how much weight has an effect on mm -hmm. your lap times. Mm -hmm. You know, you've only got a certain amount of mechanical grip on those tires. Sure. You cannot get more grip it just wow. unless you put bigger a bit this is the biggest yes. you can get yeah so the better thing you can do is make it lighter than the hand the tires can handle it and you know ultimately your times go up you get more fuel efficiency you get mm -hmm. more reliability mm -hmm. you don't use as brakes as much sure and this car uses a lot of brakes <laughs> can so you imagine do something <laughs> um move around the back and this is something that i wish oh my god was legal on the road <laughs> what is this tell everybody please uh so they're air jacks oh my god guys um, if you see that in action i've seen it before We'll get, we'll get it out. We'll get it out. There we go. He said it. We'll yeah, get it we'll, out. We'll get it so we're going to we'll hold it. We'll get the fuel turns out and we'll get the, oh, uh, the air jacks wicked, out. Wicked, wicked, but wicked. Essentially, wicked. it's uh, again, you know, when we're racing, we need things to be fast paced. Sure. So we don't need to be sat there with the jack. Yeah, all four yeah, up. yeah. Come back here, put the lance in. <laughs> Done. All four goes up. Wow. Car lifts up, take the wheels off, no problem. We've got the GT4 yes, wing. Yes, that's what I was going to ask about anyway. Yeah. Um, so. That is Solid. chassis mounted or? Yes, it's wow. well, kind of, I'll show you. It's, a, it's the same way as the GT4 is. Mm -hmm. um, it actually mounts to the hinges. So if we lift oh, it up wow. here. Oh, wow, okay. You see, we've got these wedge shapes here. Yep. And that actually mounts to this hinge, which is then chassis mounted there. Wow. It's a really, really strong. Solid, I was gonna say, because when you were pulling it there, there was no real flex. No flex. It was literally. No flex. Solid stuff. Um, another thing that some people might not know is that from factory, it's a composite boot lid. Okay. So it's a fiber slash, it's not that much carbon. They say it's carbon, but it's not really. It's basically fiberglass. Fair enough. Rear boot lid, so. Um, it's just weightless. Yeah, and then we've got our, I never ended up painting these, so yes, that looks a bit shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I kind of built these so that we could get the uh, aero catches on. Fair You've enough. You've got your adjustments here for the suspension. Yep. Um, OEM battery. I'm really surprised about that. I was looking for a lightweight yes. industries over here, but right. we haven't gone for that. Why? When you buy an M4, yes. you have a very expensive uh, yes. lithium yes. lightweight battery. That yes. only weighs nine kilograms. So what a lot of people do is they take out the lithium battery, which is fantastic for the energy that you need sure. to run these cars. Yep. And then they put in a lightweight uh, yes. AGM battery, which mm -hmm. weighs just as much. Yeah. You might then get a lightweight lithium battery, mm -hmm. but these cars, they really need the energy. Sure. They really need it because they, need, I've to, heard this. they need to start their, you know, they take a lot of energy up when they're starting, but also just running the iDrive and everything like that. Fair enough. We, we always just keep the standard battery in, but make sure it's the lithium one. There We've we never had any issues with it running out of battery and Beautiful. not starting on So us. then I'll be uh, crossing that off my mod list. No need to waste any more yes. money. We've got the OMP electronic fire extinguisher system yes, plumbed in there. Yes, I did see those tubes running into the, uh, yeah. the engine. The often question I get is, um, is it NOS? No, <laughs> yes. it's not NOS. Don't lie, I wish man. it was Don't NOS. Don't lie, I know you got you the button there, two hands on the wheel. <laughs> you know, Vin going Diesel. down the straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's, yeah, a, no. it's a safety thing. It's required for racing. You need it. It's got four litres of um, extinguishing liquid in it that sprays everywhere. I have set one off by accident oh, gosh. once. That must um, have been messy. And uh, well, it wasn't me, actually. It was someone else. Of course it was. Of course it was. I had to clean it up. <laughs> and before I forget, Frank the Tank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a bit of information about that, please, because I've never seen it. That is very cool. Okay, so um, we name all of our race cars. Yep. The E36 is called Monty. Okay. Because it is a Monty motor. It just keeps on going. It's been battered and crashed <laughs> and everything. It just keeps going. So we wanted to, you know, name this car. Um, we know that it was a big, heavy car at the time. Mm -hmm. So we called it a tank. And then we said, right, what's the name? We said, right, right Frank the Tank. <laughs> So this car is Frank the Tank. Weight is definitely key. My only issue is 
not going too far from a road friendly yes. car because I can imagine this isn't very road friendly let alone road legal is it really? No, no. <laughs> but the benefit that you get from you know what we've done here is yep. that it's all a learning curve you sure. can take a lot from this car yep. and then apply it in a club sport way sure. and that's what we're doing moving forwards with the business is that we're really trying to push the club sport side of things Wicked. we want to get involved and help all of these people here that's it choose the right things for their car and mm -hmm. choose things that they want and help them get the best out and extract them so we're also going to be doing track days where we're going to be running a race setup wow but we're going to say right bring your cars along we're going to help you. Yeah, Joel will be in there, maybe doing a bit of tuition. Wicked. I'll be doing some setup advice and stuff like that. So wicked, wicked. look out for those because they Definitely. are coming this year. Definitely. And guys, we're going to try and get a passenger lap in this beast at some point as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But yes, guys, that has been the video on the M4 GT4 down here at German Auto Works. Let me know what you think I should do to mine. There is quite a few things still left to do, but yeah. It is quite far off. But guys, as usual, if you have enjoyed this video, please smash the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care. God bless. Three, two, one. Anywhere I'm at, turn the city up. I could flip a dog to a million. I don't like to